Yo, today I got my little hoopty in here, my low buck build. It's a 96 Civic EX. Um, I'm gonna do some suspension work on it. I put a, I, I did a video on a sway bar. I, I put a 15 millimeter twin cam Del Sol re, rear sway bar in this thing, and it really helped with the body roll a lot. It made it made it handle very very noticeable difference. I'm gonna do some more stuff to it though. Still got a little body roll. I don't like the rebound on the shocks. I don't like comes up a little too fast. I just want a nice firm comfortable responsive performance ride that's what I'm looking for I guess I don't want it too stiff either so I got I got some little 14 inch HX rims on it I really like those make it ride really good I got some 15s for it too but I'm not gonna put them on yet I don't want to go any higher than 15s because it makes them ride real stiff I'm going to consider myself lucky because I found a used set of these. This is pretty much all the good stuff. Um, I found them used for better than half price, which is great because you can get lower quality stuff and it's going to cost you half price new and they're probably not even going to work nearly as good as these. These are really nice. Um, they're Coney Yellows with Eibach ground controls and um, it's got the ground control top hats they're an inch longer so you can slam the car a little bit and um, you still got some good amount of shock travel on them um, these are used there's there's things you got to look for when you buy used struts just to make sure they're going to be good enough for one you want to you can look at the date on these the date on these is 2013 so they're actually what six years old that's that's pretty good though because they don't they don't they don't look too old they're probably like half life who knows the big thing though is you want to make sure that none of these are leaking you want to make sure there's absolutely no oil coming out of any of these and they're not they're all really clean and you want to make sure that these shafts aren't scored up and they're not they look beautiful if the shafts are scored you use you'll usually see oil in them you want to make sure that these bump stops aren't all crushed. If they are, then that means it was slammed a lot and people were riding them on the bump stops. So, them look really good too. There's still a little tape around them. They're not flattened out or anything, so that's good. One thing I noticed, the guy, there's, there's a groove right here that the pinch bolt goes in. And the guy that assembled these, he just crammed the bolts in. So on both of these... They're all screwed up a little bit, and this one moved on him because he's retarded. But it'll it'll be fine. You can tell it moved, and he unbolted it and bolted it back up or something. Who knows? It's going to be fine, though. It's not going to screw up the valving at all. I also looked at the spring pressure. There's part numbers on these for the spring pressure, and these are these are the standard go-to springs for these eye box. They're, um, what, 280 and 380? 380. 380 for the front and 280 for the rear, which is good. It's about double the press spring pressure of an SI of the same year. These actually came out of an Integra. So a, a 96 to 2000 Civic, which is what I'm putting them in, they're a little different. The only difference is this is going to be wider. So I got to put some shims in here to make up for the the distance, so I don't crush these forks. Yeah, he probably he used a torch to get this bolt out too. It probably got stuck. They break a lot. You want to be careful of that. It's good if you make sure that these springs aren't like over 400 pounds. Some people like to run fours and sixes sixes and fours whatever when you when you're running when you're running over 400 450 pounds on these springs you're really hammering the crap out of these shocks and you can wear them out pretty quick this is these are actually really light coils for ground controls though so i got i got i got pretty much sold on that one another thing you can do on these is you can turn these counterclockwise you turn it all the way counterclockwise and that that turns the that turns a rebound all the way up and you can push down on this 
and see how uh, it comes up see it's coming up really 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 super duper slow it's barely even coming up at all which is good because you know the valving is going to be nice in it then I can turn it back up there now I now I now I got it all the way loose and it comes up real good so yeah I don't I don't I don't think these shocks have been used very much so I'm just going to reset these. I'm going to leave the rear nice and stiff. I'm going to turn it about a half a turn from all the way firm. And the, the fronts I'm going to do about a, a turn all the way from firm just to start out. And if I think it's too stiff, I can turn them down. And if I think it's too, the rebound's too quick, I can turn them up a little. But that's, that's where I'm going to start at. It should be pretty close to where I want it. Another thing too, there's there's two clips on the bottom. One's on the top, one's down here. This one's already set at the bottom and it's all the way up. It's adjusted almost all the way up. So he's already got this set at about, about an inch and a half drop, which is actually right where I want it. I want it about an inch and a half. You can go as low as about two, three inches, that much more. So an inch and a half though is probably where I'm going to like it. I don't really want to slam the thing because I'm going to be daily driving it a lot and it it should sit really nice. For, for a used set of struts, th these are actually really hard to find and this clean that worked this good and it's it's actually a, a tough tough one to find to buy. So I was, I was pretty thankful I got these for myself for Christmas. I'm going to throw them on. I'm going to show you how to do this. First thing I'm going to want to do is get these upper control arm bolts off. You got to kind of be careful with these. Sometimes they break when they're rusted really good. This is an Oregon car though, so there's like literally no rust on the thing. So everything should come off pretty good. Take the lower strut bolt off. This is a 14 millimeter tube. Um, if you think this isn't going to come off, you're going to want to get a, some map gas and torch this end. And it should come off. You might not have a sway bar on yours. And if you don't, get one. I got that first. It makes a bigger difference in, in the rear than doing struts. You only got to you only got to unbolt one side too, because when I do the other side, it's going to float. And then I'll put this one on last after I get the other side on, and I can just get in here with a pry bar somehow and pry this down. This suspension is still really nice and stiff. There it goes. There. Away. Now you just got to get in the trunk area. There's some plastic clips here. Take those off. One down here that's missing. Oh, it's still there. I got one here too. This is the kind you got to push the center in. And then they pop out. And to put them back in, you got to spread everything out like that. Somebody put this in all funky. You got to peel all this back. You got your shock bolts right there. Those are 14 millimeter too. If you got a helper, you can have them hang onto the strut while you take this out. Um, I don't have a helper, so yeah, I can hang on to it while I take this. Out. That'd be a strut. Now I can pull this uh the strut all the way down and hang on to it just to get a good visual line up the bottom and from the top hat to top hat I'm at about two inches on the money so this is gonna slam my car about two inches two inch drop is nice I can deal with that and for some reason this guy when he did this for some reason this one is up a little bit higher than that one so I'm gonna put this one on the driver's side he probably did that to make up for his fat ass 
And uh, then I'm going to measure these right here. You can see this U, this horseshoe right here, is a little bit taller than this one. But it's fine. I already, I already mocked it up and put it in there. I got about a quarter inch before it hits the control arm, so I should be good. I'm just going to measure this. I got 41 millimeters there. And I got 52 millimeters there, so I'm at I'm at 11 millimeters. So I got to get 10 millimeters worth of shims for this. I'm going to try to go find some hardened washers. I'm going to go to the parts store and get those now. I went to the hardware store. I got some hardened washers. I wanted to use hardened because they're less likely to crush and get wore out. And I measured these, and I got I got two thick hardened washers and two thin ones. When you add it all up, it's almost exactly 10 millimeters. For whatever reason, these new nuts are 15 millimeters. I just did that by myself. If you don't have long gorilla arms, you're probably going to need some help with them. Now that this is bolted down, I'm noticing that for whatever reason, the, the factory top hat is at a little bit of an angle, I think. I'm going to put all the washers on one side. I think it's going to be happier if I do it that way. Yeah, these washers are 3 eighths of an inch too, by the way. They're not 10 millimeter. I'm going to loosen up this control arm a little bit. You always want to start these by hand. Just to make sure you don't cross thread the things. Feel good. Now if you want to be smart about things, when you put this strut assembly on, what you're going to want to do is jack up the lower control arm. I got it so there's just barely no weight. I got it zeroed so it's not lifting off, it's not lifting off my, my pad right here. So it's, it's, it's just, it's loaded just right and what you want to do you want to loosen up this bushing and tighten it and loosen up this bushing and tighten it loosen up this bushing and tighten it and do the same thing with these right here and here loosen them up and tighten them and make sure you put this one back because this is how this is how they set your toe when they do a rear wheel alignment so put that in the same spot and it should be pretty close the reason why you do that is because you're not going to be twisting all of your all of your bushings. They're going to be nice and zero, and that that's what you want. This is the only one that you can't adjust. And um, well, it ain't ripped through yet. It looks pretty close, but it's still a bushing. I'm going to have to replace that someday. You slam it too much, and you want to take. You're going to want to take this one out and replace it, and and, and move it in a different direction. But I'm going to leave that one alone. Now for the fronts you're going to want to get this strut bolt off of here. These are both 17 millimeters. Just like the rear if they're all rusted to hell, good luck. And uh, I feel lucky. Then you're going to want to get this 14 millimeter pinch bolt off of here. And you can just, sometimes you got to pound on these, but they usually just fall right down. There, you just leave it there flopping around like that, and you're fine. Next, you got to take off these towers. I'm, I'm gravity bleeding my brakes while I'm at it, too. That's what that bottle's for. You want to hold on to the strut while you take your last bolt off. You should be able to just squirrel this thing right on out of here. Somehow. Yeah, again, um, both of his struts, he's got this one is just a little higher up. So I'm going to put this on the driver's side for the fat people. You got this collar on the strut you want to get off. Now this is where this guy made the mistake. I don't know if he didn't put this collar on. It looks like he didn't because you can see right here the wear mark is, is right where the fork is. 
So he probably got stupid, whoever did this, and, and left this left this off. Maybe he didn't maybe he didn't know that that it comes off of here. I, I don't know. So you got this little groove here, and that groove goes inside where the pinch bolt is. So the groove for the pinch bolt goes right in there, so you know you got it lined up with this. See, he didn't, that's thread marks because he's an idiot. So you want to square this up so it's centered with this divot. Then you just want to kind of pound it on. Make sure it goes on all the way. Yeah, a chunk of exhaust pipe. I'm going to put that on here and just drive this thing home. There, it's, it's right in the center, right where it's supposed to be. And it's all the way up against these tabs all the way around so that's right I could have done something pretty dumb pounding this in you want to make sure that you're not driving it on your your screw thankfully I had a block of wood up there I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this strut tower up make sure that groove right there is facing all the way towards that way that way Tap this on here. Make sure that groove's lined up. And it is. Yeah, see, I got the groove lined up. Just perfect. I can put in this pinch bolt. I got a jack under the lower control arm. That way I can line this up real good. Same deal with this. I'm going to jack up on the lower control arm until it comes off this pad. All right, that's about as far as I'm going to want to go with this. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this shock bolt. This bushing right here is a 19. I want to loosen it up and tighten it back down. You're on your on your strut tower, you also got two bolts right here, here, and here. You want to loosen these up and tighten them up too with the suspension loaded. Um, some of these are heim joints. I'm not sure about this. I'm pretty sure they're just rubber bushings in there. Yeah, they are. They're just rubber bushings. So you want to loosen them up and tighten them because it gets them to turn. So they're so they're they're in the right position with with a loaded suspension a lot of people put these upper control arms in unloaded and it's wrong because you're just twisting the bushings in there so there I, I got this now uh you just do the same thing to the other side i rolled the car forward and backwards just to get the tires to settle really nice and yeah you can tell by looking at it the bottom's all kicked out that's negative camber, and that's way over a degree and a half. So I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going to loosen this bolt up just because it's easier to work with then. I'm going to want longer bolts. These are going to be a little too short. I got some longer bolts. I got one hardened washer and one regular washer. It comes out to be about four and a half millimeters. Basically, it's about the same. It's about the same as three. This control arm's a pain in the butt. I'm gonna take it all the way out. That should make my life a little easier. Yeah, like I said before, I always start those by hand because they're really easy to cross thread. Same with this. Before you tighten up this bolt, you want to put a jack under here and load up this suspension. I actually put one more washer in there. So it's about seven millimeters thick of washers on each side. And that's gonna be just a hair negative and that's probably right where I want it. I'll get an alignment and see what the specs are at. If it's over a if it if it's over a, a degree and a half, I'll I'll put a shim or two more in there. It won't affect the toe in the rear either, so yeah, I bet that's right as rain. I can tell the front's towed out a little bit too. I could actually, I could actually move 
the tie rods out about two turns on each side and I'd probably get a lot closer. It's no big deal though. I'll just leave it sit and I'll get an alignment in the spring. And uh, yeah, that's it. I measured all four corners and it's it's within a quarter inch on all four corners so yeah that's it's uh, a little lower than I kind of expected it but I'm not messing with it I'll leave it right there I'll probably like it just fine oh yeah correction just for fun I turn the I turned the tie rods two turns longer and it towed it in more which is probably what I needed and yeah now I can really see the negative camber on the front and rear and I'm probably really gonna like it just where it's at if not too you can get up you can get upper ball joints for your upper control arms that you can turn one degree in they turn and bolt down. They're kind of cheesy, but I've used them and they work fine. I don't think I'm going to do that though. I'm probably going to leave it right where it's at because this thing should be cornering like a mad dog. No. Loving it. Okay, bye.